From NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, this is the Flight Day 4 Stock Update Report. The orbit team of stock flight controllers had a very productive day today as they oversaw the installation of a new science instrument along with a new command data handling package on the Hubble telescope, two of the three highest priorities for the STS-125 mission. We spoke with Mission Operations Manager Keith Wallace just after he and his team had concluded their day to get his thoughts on how things went with the first of the five planned Hubble spacewalks. So today we had the first spacewalk of the mission and there were two major activities. The first, we were changing out the wide field planetary camera two, which is installed in the first servicing mission. And we're putting in this new generation wide field camera three. So the old workhorse instrument is now being replaced by the new one. It took a while to get it done. There were some issues with the EVA trying to get the camera out who did a fantastic job, they worked through it, and we got the new camera in. When that old camera got out and the new one got in, there was a huge cheer which erupted from the control center. And right after that, we had our job to do. So then we had to check out this camera. Is it alive? Do we have power? Are there heaters? Is everything working fine? And in fact, right now, we're going for what we call a functional test to make sure it's functioning. All those other functions, how well can you zoom, do all the different channels, do all the different types of light, will, they all be, will that all work in this camera? We're going through that more detailed test right now. So that was the first part and everything's going fantastically well. The second part is the reason for the delay of six months. We changed out our computer, our science and data handling computer, which ships all the data from the instruments through the telescope and then it gets sent back down to Earth. Well, that had a problem back in September. So now we have this new one. Actually, it's not a new one. It's 19 years old. It's a flight spare. We tested that. We flew it. We installed it. We've checked it out, we've done the aliveness test, we've done the functional test, and it's all working perfectly well. So it's just a great feeling. That first day, we got it all accomplished. It's fantastic. We got a little bit ahead on tasks that are coming up. On EVA 3, we're going to be doing not only installing the new cosmic origin spectrograph instrument, but we're going to be repairing the advanced camera for surveys. It's going to be a long task on that day. So we actually did some things. We worked on the doors a little bit to make them easier to open for day three. This will save us some time and make it a little easier to get everything done on that very busy day. So we call those get-ahead tasks. We got a couple of them done. Additionally, there's one other task that we got done today. It's a soft capture mechanism. And this grips on the back of HST, so in the future, if there ever wants to be a rendezvous with Hubble, it'll be easier. We looked a while ago at a robotic mission of how we could actually grab Hubble and service it robotically. And one of the biggest problems we saw a few years ago was trying to actually grasp Hubble. Because Hubble was built to be grasped by a shuttle with an arm, not by a remote satellite. So this is something in the future, if that ever has to be done, that capability is there and it'll be much easier. Well, tomorrow is more for some of the engineering tasks to make sure the Hubble is going to run better. The two big tasks are our gyros and our batteries. Our batteries, these are the original batteries from 19 years old. And just like any other battery, the battery in your car, batteries run down over time. Still working fine, but they're running down. So we're going to install a new set of batteries, which will give us an extended life with Hubble for these. So we shouldn't have any worries about the batteries in the future. The other are the gyros. We have six gyros on board. And these gyros, they start to fail. They break over time. We last changed them out in 1999. There were six gyros. We now have three working. We nominally operate with just two gyros at a time, but we want to have six, so in case any break, we can still operate. So we're going to take all the old six ones out and put in a brand new set of six. It should give us a long life. As Keith mentioned, the two main objectives during tomorrow's STS-125 spacewalk will contribute to extending Hubble's operating life with the installation of new gyroscopes and new batteries. After leaving the airlock and completing their initial payload-based setup work, Astronauts Mike Massimino and Mike Good will first focus their attention on replacing all six of Hubble's gyroscopes which are needed to point the spacecraft. Hubble has six gyros in total, and over time they wear out. We're down to three working gyros, but we're only using two. We're keeping one in spare. And in the next servicing mission, we're going to replace all the gyros that we have full gyro capability for years to come. Well, we have six gyros, and what we do is we package two of them into a box with a handle. It's not an easy task to replace these, these rate sensor units, these three boxes. The star trackers have these long tubes on them called sunshades. So when the 
astronauts have to replace the gyros, they have to sort of wedge themselves into this very small area without touching these sunshades. Gyros help us in two ways. When we move from target to target, the gyros help the computer know how quickly we're turning. Once we get locked in on a target, those gyros help us steady the vehicle so that we can collect all that scientific data and get those great pictures. The second activity by Massimino and Good on Friday's spacewalk will be to replace one of the two BMUs or battery module units on the telescope. The telescope has two battery module units, each containing three 125 pound nickel hydrogen batteries. These batteries provide all the electrical power to support Hubble operations during the night portion of its orbit. The telescope's orbit is approximately 96 minutes long, about 60 minutes of which is spent in sunlight and 36 minutes is in the Earth's shadow. The, the batteries were operating on our RV original batteries that were launched with the observatory in 1990. The design lifespan was five years, so these batteries are, are operating well past what they were designed for. It's time to change them out. We are losing capacity. We're installing uh, six new batteries arranged in two modules of three packs each. So it's one down and four to go with the five spacewalks that are planned for the mission that will extend the telescope's life and increase its observation capabilities. We will now return to the Johnson Space Center. Coming up next on NASA TV, the first airing of the Flight Day 4 Highlights Package at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central Time. <laughs>